Hi everyone, this is Little Surprises YT or Amy, and today I'm going to show you how to make a Tsum Tsum Finding Dory clock. If you haven't watched my previous tutorials where I show you how to make Dory and all of the other characters in the movie, I will put links of those down below in the description box. So today I'm just going to show you how I assemble all of the pieces. So again, these are all of the pieces that I'm showing you on the screen of the Finding Dory characters that will be made into a clock. And the clock that I'm actually using is from IKEA. This will be, I think, my second or third IKEA hack video that will be on my channel. So if you want to watch more videos like this, I will put a link of other clock videos down below in the description box. And you have, if you have any other suggestions for clocks you'd like to see, please let me know down below in the comments. So again, these are, I think, a total of nine pieces that I made of the Finding Dory characters. Also, you can feel free to use this video as a guide for making your own character clocks. I'm totally fine with that. And again, like I said, this clock is from Ikea. It was, I think, $1.99. And this is the R-U-S-C-H, the Rouge clock, I think. I'm not sure if I'm saying that correctly. Um, but it's super cheap and you can take it apart very, very easily. So the first thing that I do is I take apart the front panel, um, the glass or plastic panel, and I uh, just use one of my plastic tools to kind of push this little rectangle out and you'll see what I'm doing right here. Then I take off the front piece, the plastic piece, and then take apart the arms of the clock as well. So try to remember which one was um, furthest in and which one was furthest out because we will be reassembling all of the arms of the hand later on um, when we're done decorating the clock itself. Um, so here I am also removing the paper template. Try your best not to rip it too badly because we are going to use it as our marker. It might be a little difficult to take the paper off of the bag at first because of the glue they use, but afterwards it should be very easy. Just be very careful to um, not rip it too badly. And here is the template itself. Originally I was going to use this scrapbooking paper, but I found it to be too busy and it kind of blended in with Destiny and Mr. Ray, the Zoom Zoom pieces I made. So I decided to use the back of a different scrapbook paper um, that is blue and then just decorate it myself later. So here I'm using the paper template from the clock and just uh, drawing a circle, just uh, tracing it onto the pa blue paper and then marking where the numbers are so that I don't have to use like a protractor or something to figure that out later. So even before gluing any of the pieces down, I used a template to place down each of my pieces and then I outlined where each of those places would go into equal 12s. And then I pretty much marked a little circle on each of the lines and then erased the lines, decorated the background, and then um, cut out the circle template. So as you can see, this was our original template. And then this is what it looks like after it's all decorated. As you can see, I have little black circles where I'm going to glue down my little polymer clay pieces. And again, before gluing down, just make sure that all of the pieces that you place down is where you want them to be. Um, you can always change where you want to put the pieces. And this is why it's always better to do it before actually gluing it down because it'll look really ugly if you remove it. Trust me, I've done that. It looks bad. <laughs> Afterward, you're going to cut out your, P, uh, your template now and then don't forget to cut out the little inner circle of the template because this is where the arms of the clock are going to go into. And now I'm actually going to use E6000 glue to glue down each of my polymer clay pieces before actually gluing the template to the actual clock. So as you can see, I use a toothpick to spread the glue onto the back. And if you guys don't know, E6000 is like an industrial craft glue. If you want to use super glue, be my guest. I've just never used it before um, for polymer clay pieces. Now again, before gluing down the template to the clock, I pretty much put my circle template into the clock just to make sure that it fit and it does. And then I also reposition all the arms of the clock back in to its little case um, just to make sure that everything fit. And this is the part where you also have to make sure that your hands 
can go past each of the pieces. If it doesn't, like it doesn't go past Bailey's head over here, then you're going to have to cut it down to size, which is exactly what I do. Um, I cut the seconds hand smaller first, and then the minutes hand, and then the hours hand again. The hours hand should be shorter than the minutes hand, and the seconds hand, I think, because it's red, you just, it doesn't really matter if it's longer or shorter than the minutes hand. Um, I just kind of use that as a guideline. After cutting everything down to size, you want to make sure that when you move the seconds hand that the minutes hand um, kind of moves across the clock and that it doesn't hit any of the pieces, which right now it doesn't look like it's going to do so. And then you also want to move the minutes hand to make sure that the hours hand is moving. Afterwards, I'm using my E6000 glue again and putting it around the edge of the clock where I'm going to glue down the template. I also put some glue in the middle and use a popsicle stick to smear everything around. Once you've pushed down your piece, and I would recommend kind of massaging the template into um, the glue so that there's no bubbles, um, you are going to have to wait at least an hour or two before putting the plastic case back over um, because if the glue heats up while it's still wet, it can cause a fog uh, within the plastic case of the clock. Using the dial on the back of the clock, I just make sure that all of the hands are working and then once you secure that, you can put the plastic case over and put a battery in the back. When putting the plastic case back over, you want to make sure that the nooks are going into the same positions where we poked it out and you also want to be very careful because you don't want to crack the front. And there you have it, your completed clock. And here I'm just showing you what it looks like close up. I really, really love this piece. Um, if you, again, haven't watched the video already, I already made a tutorial on how to make all the polymer clay pieces of each of these characters. And I will also be offering this clock on my Etsy. Um, if you guys are interested in any other future IKEA clock hacks or IKEA hacks um, that's crafting related, please let me know down below. And um, thank you guys so, so much for watching. And don't forget that uh, you can also decorate the background in any way you like. Use this video as like a guide to make your own IKEA clock hacks. I would love to see your videos. You can tag me on Instagram or um, comment down below. And that's pretty much it. This clock uses one AA battery. I got this battery in a pack of like 10 or 20 from IKEA. I can totally attest that this IKEA battery has been going on it's been working really well because a year later it's still working in another one of my IKEA clock hacks that I did. Thanks for tuning in to all of my Finding Dory tutorials. If you have any other suggestions and ideas that you'd like to see on my channel, please let me know. And that's pretty much it. I'll see you guys next time. See ya!